So revenge is always a good theme, right? Yes, it's always a good theme, but forgiveness is a better one. But what I liked about uh, your character being the villain is that it was the villain who almost seemed victimized throughout the whole movie, not knowing what's going on, you know, trying to figure out what's happening to him. Like, did you enjoy that yeah, uneasiness? Well, you know when you've done something wrong, like earlier on in my, in my first marriage when I was an idiot and I cheated on my wife, you know, you still expect, you want good things to come, but you know that you have to pay for what you've done. Mm. Until that moment, you're always in expectation of the recompense of your action. As a guy who is now growing up, I'm in my 30s now, I'm trying to realize what you're trying to say. And I realized it in this movie. And I see that you and Colin, two guys who march to the beat of their own drum, who've made mistakes, uh, who've made their mm -hmm. own decisions, I saw through your performances that you guys look like you're in a place in your life where you're kind of personally stable, personally grown up, but you're, you seem to have strength built on pain of maybe regrets or things that you've done in the past, and, and I saw that in, in this We're going to let this interval go a little bit longer. Welcome to Latin Nation, celebrating your generation from coast to coast. I'm your host, Humberto Guida, and right here, right now, we kick off the 11th season of Latin Nation. Look, we even got a cool new set, and that's because of you guys out there tuning in every week. So this year, we're gonna give you more of what you want. The people, the culture, the trends that celebrate Latinos coming up in this country. Because whether you're Hispanic or not, you gotta ask yourself, has there ever been a better time to be a Latino? I'm going through like a new age self-realization phase in my life and so turtle I, pout, I can imagine. Yeah. And did you go through that process personally as you're doing it on screen? What, learning to be tough? Yeah, I think you've already learned to be tough, let's be honest. I have an indomitable spirit, for sure. I have a tiny human body. So, you know. So I'm gonna ask you to quickly psychoanalyze me. Which turtle would I be? It's so interesting. I was just, okay. Now you are much less obvious to me as a turtle. Some people are immediately, it's clear what okay. turtles they are. Cool. I feel like the vibe that you're giving me now, you definitely have Mikey in you for yeah, sure, 100%. Fact. Fact. Maybe you have, I'm feeling like maybe you have a little Donnie in you. Mm. You have some darkness to you as well, some introvertedness as well. Yeah. I'm gonna hold on to you telling me that for the rest of my life. Okay. <laughs> Every performer, especially in Hollywood, they, if, if, hopefully they have an up, but they always have a down, and they always have to go through this um, questioning period, and you know, is, is everything gonna work out? Am I doing the right thing? My goal when I was younger was always that I just wanted to be able to act every day of my life. That is the path I would choose over anything. If somebody was like, well, you know, like, would you choose what? That's what I would choose. I know I wanna do what I love every day. It's becoming easier and easier to find stories of folks who are speaking their minds, getting down with the global community, and focusing on positivity. And that's what Latin Nation is all about. And I can't think of a better story to kick the show off with than a band with a cult following. Not just because their fusion of reggae, rock, Latin, and tropical sounds is off the chain and makes for a kid or life show, but because this multicultural jam band has a message, and it's a good one. This is Soja getting the party started only on Latin Nation. Welcome back to Latin Nation. I'm your host, Humberto Guida. And now it's time for me to hit the streets, this time in New York City. And what better place than Union Square to ask young adults whether or not they go online to find dates. Now, not to spoil it, but apparently a lot of them do. However, their reasons and reactions to it are much different than you'd expect. These are definitely 21st century, first world problems, people, and we're gonna solve them right here on Latin Nation. Guys, I am here in New York City. One of the biggest cities in the world where you would think it's easy to meet people. And it's definitely easy to meet people here, but a lot of people today are online dating. Some people might admit it, some might not. We're gonna find out today. Let's ask them. Have you ever done any online dating? I joined OkCupid, okay but I didn't go on any dates. I joined it to kind of see what was out there, and I saw what was out there, and then I was like, never mind. I used to do online dating to like Mac Wild Girls, but like, they was like dudes, so like I don't trust these these sites no more, man. They're fake. Wait, they were actual dudes, or they were acting like dudes. It was dudes. A lot of people do this online dating stuff, okay? Um, Tinder, Kyoke Cupid. I guess uh, there's the grinder for some folks. I guess like the guy over there. It's all about self improvement, man. Self realization, turtle power. You know, it's about pulling back the shell, Umberto. Mm. What are you holding on to? What are your nuts? 
Exactly, That's, I, I, and I'm trying to figure that out at this point in my life. Now up next, you all get to see me in some compromising positions. That's because I hit the mat with Eddie Bravo, the man who revolutionized the art of jujitsu with his 10th planet system. Hanging out here, I gotta try to get you out of here. I'm gonna get under and I'm gonna, under his leg here, mm -hmm. and I have so much control of his leg that I can lift him up here, put him on his side, put this leg on my shoulder, and then we test out his flexibility. Uh oh, I have. Got, I don't have good flexibility, so let's see. If he doesn't have flexibility, then they tap right here. Ah! There's an old saying: that expect nothing and you get everything. That's how I really try to li live my life, because if, if you expect a win. Expect to dominate. That means that you're not dominating right now. Wow. Um, I feel like I know you so much better now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a cigarette? Now, up next, we broach a controversial subject. So, of your discretion, be aware the following statements do not reflect the opinions of this show or its sponsors. But we felt compelled to tell a story because more and more people around the world are turning to alternative means of therapy. And sometimes that includes psychoactive plants and ancient indigenous ceremonies as a means of confronting deep emotional issues. And we sat down with the director of a documentary called Little Saints to understand why these ceremonial plants find themselves at the center of a global discussion in regards to the future of psychology and holistic medicine. This is a story you will only see on Latin Nation. My name is Oliver Quintanilla. I'm an independent filmmaker, and um, I've been working on a project for a long time uh, about shamanism and, and the use of psilocybin mushrooms. There was one moment where there was like a, a light that started forming, and uh, the light got huge, and I got enveloped by the light, and I, it was like I was looking into the sun. Physically, my eyes felt like I was looking into the sun so much so that I had to open up my eyes, and I realized, no, I'm in a dark room in a house where everybody's, you know, on ayahuasca. Wow. So they don't care about Hispanics. Why do you think that? Tell us. Nah, it's just that they don't, because everybody that gets an election is always white. That's it. <laughs> right. Barack Obama happens to be black. I was going to point that out to him, but uh, I think he ran off. During the campaigns, <laughs> they have held it against Barack Obama that he gives good speeches. Like, if that's a bad thing. After eight years of a president that can't put together a freaking sentence, I don't mind a guy that can give a good motivational speech, because in the end, our leader motivates. That if you look him up on the internet and put Rudy Giuliani in a dress, you'll see at least three pictures of him in drag. Hey, once, fine, twice maybe, three times a lady. They don't want the DREAM Act. They kind of seem to be standing in the way of any progress when it comes to, sure, minorities and poor, but mainly Latinos. Let me ask you a question. Would you ever date a guy that's shorter than you? I have dated guys. Well, let me see how much shorter I am. That's a very specific question. Let me just get in the middle here. Amy, you get up too. Get, get up for oh, a second. Let me oh, see. Oh, jeez. Okay. I'm so I'm too short for you, right? No. Be honest. No? No. Am I? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Am I too tall for you? No. You just open. Listen, have you ever Facebook, have you ever tweeted something that you regretted, that you did like emotionally, and then after you posted it, you were like, oh my God, I shouldn't have posted that. Like, you're like, oh, why did I post that picture of myself? Things like that. <laughs> Occasionally. I waited until marriage and stuff. You like, waited until marriage? For what? I just, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, to, to like, have sex and stuff. You like. waited until marriage to have sex? Everybody, look, supposedly there's one girl who waited until marriage to have sex. You make all Latino parents proud. My, no, no, I'm not saying me because I'm not married. I'm saying my mom said that. Oh, my your mom, mom said, that. said that she waited. Yes. Okay, no, that you know, no, you know, let me no, tell you something. No. That was total BS. So, has anyone ever played Quidditch? Yes, I'm talking about that mythical sport played by the houses of Hogwarts School of Wizardry in the Harry Potter books and movies. Well, people are actually enacting a real life version of this sport and it's becoming a phenomenon taking over athletic fields all over the country. And I went out and played it with a group of some of the most athletic nerds I've ever met in my life. You wanna know how I did? Here it is, check it out. Ready, room up. So he's, he's gonna probably catch passes, he's gonna, he's gonna try to score goals, um, he's gonna try to make some tackles on defense, mark up man-to-man uh, -man coverage, that kind of thing and he might get tackled himself. Thank you. Ah! The hardest thing, honestly, is the most mundane part of this thing. Keeping the broomstick between your legs, to me, is like the hardest possible thing that you could possibly do in your life. So you have to stay on the broom at all times, which means you usually have to catch with one hand. Um, so that can be really tough to adapt to, but we kind of liken it to dribbling in basketball. It's that kind of handicap, so you can't just 
bolt down the field and score. We make it try to make it a little bit more complicated like that. Did you get it on camera when I got picked in the face? Ah! No. Ah! The last part of the game is the seeker. Uh, you may remember from the movies that was Harry Potter's position. Um, catches the snitch and ends the game. So now I'm the seeker. I need to find the, I need to grab the snitch. Show the tail, Tony! Show the tail. I need to grab that thing. I don't know if I want to, but I'm gonna have to. Jesus Christ, these kids are serious. I think our host, Umberto, uh, might want to kind of hang back and kind of take it easy. He doesn't want to get out there because naturally he's going to get all shot up. One unexpected problem is that my gun went from semi-automatic to fully automatic. I have no idea how that happened. What the hell? And remember to check us out at latinnation.tv and like us on Facebook and Twitter. Plus hit me up directly on Twitter at Umberto Guido. So leading us out on our season premiere is One More Treat, a look inside a life-changing event I was able to participate in this summer. It's called Burning Man, a week-long arts festival and probably the ultimate counterculture event that goes down every year in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada. And I'm not sure words can do justice to this very surreal experience, so we're leaving you with a montage of moments from what I saw. Till next time, peace.